Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this video there is lots to negotiate about. So let me just give you the breaking news on Angel Gomez then I will delve into a bit more topics a bit later on in the video. And there's positivity you know coming out regarding Angel Gomez. Um, I think this is stemming from social media and they reportedly said that Angel Gomez has signed a new contract at Manchester United, so he will be signing again for the football club. Now, like I mentioned to you the other week when I was talking about Angel Gomez, I did say his current contract does expire at the end of next month. Now, obviously, you know, we've been in you know, contract negotiations with Angel Gomez for quite some time. Um, we have put forward quite a few contract offers for Angel Gomez. I think we offered him a contract at the start of the season. I think it did mention back in March saying that, you know, that we'd offered Angel Gomez around £25,000 a week. I think it did mention a couple of weeks ago as well saying that we'd offered him a £30,000 a week contract plus additional bonuses, but he also turned down this contract offering that. So that's what it basically said. And don't forget, you know, these clubs that are interested in Angel Gomez, you know, don't forget it's mentioned in recent weeks saying that Chelsea um, are convinced that they can sign him. I think Angel Gomez's agent has had quite a few negotiations with Chelsea. Also, to it mentioned that Arsenal were in for him. Also, to Barcelona had expressed their interest in him and that. So this is, you know, what it had mentioned. But yeah, so reportedly now Angel Gomez has signed a new contract at Manchester United. Now, up until this point, Angel Gomez has spent the entirety of his career with the football club. You know, like I said, I think Angel Gomez has been in our senior squad since 2017. But Angel Gomez's appearances have been limited at the football club. You know, I think he's only made 10 first-team appearances and six of those appearances have come this season. Now, I think Angel Gomez will be looking to get around £30,000 a week um, to obviously, you know, stay at Manchester United because, you know, we've obviously confirmed that we want Angel Gomez to stay at the football club. Now, I think it did report out, uh, was it a month or so ago now, saying that Angel Gomez does want to stay at Manchester United because he you know he believes he can be at Man United for the foreseeable future and he wants to win trophies with the football club. So there you go and that. I think on his cur his current wages at the moment I think are like seventeen thousand pounds a week of Angel Gomez's. Now don't forget Angel Gomez became the youngest player to represent Man United since Duncan Edwards back in the nineteen fifties. He also became the first player born in the 2000s to make an appearance in the Premier League. And I think Angel Gomez is only the age of 19 and that. So there you go. So now, allegedly, with Angel Gomez signing this new contract, does that mean, you know, Jesse Lingard is leaving Manchester United and that? Because analysing it, you know, probably Jesse Lingard is the worst player we have got at the moment. Um, even if Angel Gomez, you know, was to leave, I'd still think, you know, Jesse Lingard would leave the football club anyway, you know, reflects on how inconsistent he is. You know, Jesse Lingard has not registered one goal or one assist in the Premier League for over the year. So that just indicates how, how bad Jesse Lingard is. Now, as you all know, Jesse Lingard has spent the entirety of his career with Manchester United, came through, came through our youth setup and that. Don't forget Jesse Lingard's had quite a few loan spells. I think he had one with Leicester, Birmingham, Brighton and Derby. But we are looking to offload him. Don't forget Jesse Lingard has got a year left on his Manchester United contract. But the club do have an option to extend it by a further year. Whether we trigger this one year extension on his contract or not, I do not know. And I think Jesse Lingard is now in his late 20s. Now, I think, you know, we do value Jesse Lingard at around £30 million. I think it did mention the other week that there was four Premier League clubs that were interested in getting Jesse Lingard in. But Jesse Lingard has found game time very, very difficult anyway since the arrival of Bruno Fernandes and that. So, yeah, so very, very positive news that, you know, revert back to what I said about Angel Gomez, you know, it's very positive news that, you know, he's allegedly signed a new contract at Manchester United. But I think, you know, if we can convince him to stay at the club, he should get more first-team opportunities, should the player and that. 
because you know there's quite a few young players you know that I've had there that I've found you know game time very very difficult you know you've had Tahith John that's found game time very very difficult his appearances have been limited at the football club you know you've had James Garner his appearances you know have also been limited at the football club I think James Garner has only made seven first team appearances for Man United you know, and obviously up until this point, James Garner spent the entirety of his career with the club. Uh, just James Garner has got a contract with a football club until 2022 with an option of a further year. I give you the news on James Garner, was it last week? And it did mention that we're willing to allow James Garner to go out on loan. And it did mention that three clubs from the championship were interested. And that was Swansea, Cardiff, and Sheffield Wednesday and that. Swansea Cardiff and Sheffield Wednesday. So yeah, so we are allowing James Garner to go out on loan. You know, we are allowing him to go out on loan. I think we're also willing to loan Dylan Levitt out as well because Dylan Levitt's appearances have been limited the, limited at the club. Um, I think there was talks as well that we're going to be loaning Ethan Laird out and that. But we have got quite a few players out on loan as it stands. You know, obviously we've got Chris Smalling who's out on loan at Roma. We've got Rojo who's out on loan at Estudiantes. Don't forget, you know, we did save in regards to Smalling that we do want around £18 million to get rid of Smalling permanently. And I think Roma do want to get, you know, Smalling on a permanent transfer. Because Paulo Finesca, the Roma boss, has revealed that Chris Smalling wants to stay at Roma. And even Chris Smalling did say that he's very proud to represent Roma and he does not regret leaving Manchester United. So there you go. And with all this, we've said of in regards to Rojo that we want around £12 million to let Rojo go permanently. I think Estudiantes wants to get Rojo permanently uh, because he's on loan at Estudiantes at the moment, like I mentioned. And also two Boca Juniors are interested in Marcus Rojo. Rojo, of course, endured five years, or was it five and a half years at Man United? Smalling endured nine years at the football club. Don't forget, we've got um, Alexis Sanchez out on loan into Milan. Sanchez is facing a dilemma because, you know, into Milan don't want to get Sanchez permanently. And um, plus, you know, we don't want him back at Manchester United. We'll probably loan Sanchez back out. We won't be able to get rid of him permanently, reflecting on his substantial wages. So there you go on that. But Sanchez did enjoy a difficult 18 months at Manchester United. Uh, at Manchester United, yes he did in that. So he won't come back to the football club. Don't forget we've got Dean Henderson. We've got um we've got um Dean Henderson out on loan at the moment as well. Um he's out on loan with Sheffield United. I think we have confirmed that, you know, willing to let his loan be extended, you know, at Sheffield United. Um, I think we did confirm that we are willing to loan Dean Henderson back out again, but, you know, we're not willing to let him go on a permanent transfer because we probably see Dean Henderson as a long-term replacement for David De Gea. So there you go. So we have loaned quite a few players out. Uh, like I also mentioned as well, we've got around nine players' contracts that are due to expire next year. So that's something we do need to resolve. But to be fair, a lot of players' contracts have been extended since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got recommended in to the football club. So, yeah, that's the latest news on Angel Gomez and all of that. Now let's delve into the next topic. So, according to recent reports, uh, the Premier League... Uh, the Premier League could decide uh, when uh, Premier League could decide a start date uh, this week. You know, for when the Premier League does resume, so they could decide a start date this week. Could the Premier League? Um, don't forget, you know, Tottenham Man United is going to be the first Premier League game back, and it is going to be live on Friday night football. So yeah, revert back to what I've just said. The Premier League could agree. A start date this week for you know when the season does resume. But like I said, Tottenham Man United is definitely going to be the first Premier League game. Uh, like I said, report some reports have said the season's going to be resuming on the 19th of June. Some reports have said it could be resuming on the 18th of June, and some reports have even mentioned that it could resume on the 12th of June. Like I've said to you, it all depends on the fitness levels, but it will be really, really good to have football back. The Premier League has been suspended since the 13th of March 
So it has been suspended now for a good nine or ten weeks or something like that. Don't forget the Bundesliga recently returned. Um, I think the La Liga is resuming, by the way, on the 8th of June. But definitely, you know, the season is going to be resuming. But the Premier League have got to come to an agreement on a start there and that. Like I said, you know, our full squad is now uh, back in training. Uh, we've been training today at Carrington. Don't forget we returned to training last Wednesday. Um, a lot of clubs up and down the country recently returned to training. Recently returned to training because obviously, you know, last Monday, the Premier League did confirm on a statement that clubs had voted unanimously to return to smaller training groups. So like I mentioned the other week, that was obviously you know, the first step to resuming the season. Uh, like I mentioned, there was talks of games being venued at neutral grounds, but I don't think that's going to happen because, you know, there has been too many clubs protesting against that. So there you go. Um, but yeah, we have returned to training now. Like I mentioned, we have named like a 29-man squad for when the season does resume. Uh, we have got a fully fit squad, by the way, for when the season resumes. Because Solskjaer did confirm this a couple Solskjaer did confirm this a couple of weeks ago. So obviously you now we've got Marcus Rashford who's now back from his back injury. We've also got Paul Popper now, you know, he's recently recovered from his ankle injury and that. So that is very, very good news. So like I said, you know, Tottenham and Man United is going to be a very, very good game. You know, Jose Mourinho reuniting with Manchester United, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, will be looking to beat Jose Mourinho for... Looking to beat Jose Mourinho for the second time as manager because Solskjaer has already beaten him once early on in the season. We beat Tottenham by two goals to one at Old Trafford. I think also Tottenham will have a fully fit squad for when the season does resume. So there you go on that. So the Premier League, you know, could agree a start there this week. So that's obviously, you know, very, very good news. But like I mentioned, you know, these 92 games to play in all competitions. And, you know, we've got things to look forward to when the season resumes. You know, obviously, you know, we've got to the FA Cup, you know, because we are into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. You know, we've got the Europa League. We're into the last day of the Europa League. And, the FA Cup and the Europa League is a chance of us getting some silverware on the board under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that. Like I said, there's decisions that Manchester United have got to make before the football season resumes. Um, obviously, you know, we've got to make a decision on Paul Pogba's future. You know, we've got to make a decision on Diego Delors future. You know, maybe Solskjaer should give more of the youngsters opportunities. Uh, Solskjaer probably needs to work out his best formation. Because he has been changing formation persistently this season. You know, he's been going like with a 4 3 3 a few times. He's also gone with a 4 2 3 1 a lot. He's gone with a 3 5 2 a couple of times. But I think, you know, we look more expansive with that 3 5 2 formation. Um, no. So there's decisions that Manchester United have got to definitely make. And don't forget as well, we are chasing the top four. You know, we are chasing the top four, you know, because we are three points behind the top four at the moment, three points behind Chelsea. And I'm very, very convinced that we can get qualification for the Champions League for next season. Very, very convinced about it indeed. So there you go on that. So that is the latest news on that. Um, Obviously, earlier on today, I give you the news on Odina Gallo, didn't I? Um, I think Odina Gallo is going to be leaving Manchester United next week. He's going to be leaving next week. Uh, Odi Inigalo's loan deal at the football club does expire on the 31st of May, which I think is on Sunday. Uh, don't forget, uh, Shanghai Shinu did say that they expect Odi Inigalo to return in time for the start of the new Chinese Super League season. So reflecting on that, we have been dealt a huge blow. Because we was looking to extend Odi Inigalo's loan for a further three months. But reportedly Shanghai Shinu have turned down this proposal and that. And I think Solskjaer did make the admission saying, you know, that he wanted to get Odi Inigalo on a permanent transfer. Um, obviously, you know, Shanghai Shinu did confirm a couple of weeks ago if they are to get rid of Odi Inigalo uh, permanently, they do want £20 million. 
But I think, you know, we've actually now got reservations about paying £20 million pounds to get, get him on a permanent basis. Don't forget, you know, we paid, was it around 3 or £4 million to get Odina Gallo in on loan in January. Like I said to you, Odina Gallo has enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. He has got four goals in three starts for the football club. And like I mentioned, he has been a very, very good cover-up to Marcus Rashford. You know, so I expect Odina Gallo to make a return to Shanghai Shenu. I really, really do. Uh, obviously, you know, you had James Cooper from Sky Sports and he came out and said, you know, that we do remain relaxed over Odina Gallo's future. But yeah, it's looking very, very likely he's going back to China. So what striker are Manchester United going to recommend in? in? What striker are we going to recommend in? in the summer transfer window, you know, because obviously, you know, there has been a lot of strikers on our agenda and that. So, yeah, you know the news on Odina Gallo. Um, earlier on today, I give you the news on Joshua King from Bournemouth, didn't I? Because it's now reportedly saying that we see Joshua King as an alternative to Odina Gallo. Now, it did mention in Sky Sports, which is a reliable source, they said four clubs out of the top six in the Premier League are interested in signing Joshua King. Don't forget Joshua King is a former Man United player. Don't forget we'd submitted a £20 million bidding for him on deadline day in January. But of course, Bournemouth had turned this bid down. So there you go. So you already know the news on Joshua King, don't you? Solskjaer, of course, has got decisions to make in the summer. You know, what players he's going to recommend in and what players, of course, he is going to get rid of. You know, Solskjaer's already said he wants to make around three or four signings in the summer. This is what, you know, Solskjaer has confirmed. And I think he's planning on getting rid of around six or seven players in the summer. And I've got an idea, you know, the players Solskjaer's going to get rid of. I think he's definitely going to get rid of Phil Jones because Phil Jones can't even get into the team. Phil Jones has been here since the Ferguson area. He could possibly get rid of Diego Delo. I think Lingard and Pereira, like I mentioned, are going to go as well. Small and Rojo will go on permanent transfers. Like I said, Sanchez will probably be loaned back out. You know, Pogba could still possibly leave the football club. So he's going to get rid of more of the Deadwood, is so sharp, because he's obviously now got rid of a lot of the Deadwood, you know, since he got recommended into Manchester United. I think Solskjaer in total has offloaded around 19 players. I think around eight or nine of them were senior players. And I think he got rid of like 10 young players, did Solskjaer and that. So to be fair, like I mentioned, he has got rid of a lot of the Deadwood. He has got rid of a lot of the Deadwood and that. So there you go. There you go and that. But like I said, the most players that Manchester United have been linked with the, the players that have been mainly spoken about in the mainstream media has been obviously you no know, Jaden Sancho, Jude Bellingham and Jack Grealish because they are our priority targets. And obviously you no know, Solskjaer's already identified the areas in the squad where he does want to strengthen up and that. Like I've said, you know, I have seen improvements under Solskjaer, you know, since he replaced Jose Mourinho back in December twenty eighteen. I've definitely seen improvements, you know, like I think, you know, we've improved in the transfer market. I think, you know, we've definitely, you know, improved in the transfer market. Um, you know, what I mean is I think, you know, Solskjaer's recommended the players that I wanted to recommend in. And, you know, we've been a bit more sensible with our recruitment because Solskjaer knows recommended five good players in and spent around £220 million. Pounds. Of course, last summer... Solskjaer recommended Daniel James and Wan Bissaka and Harry Maguire in. And in January, he recommended Bruno Fernandes and Odina Gallo in. And they've all enjoyed fantastic starts to the Man United careers. And they've all done very, very well. You know, but in the two previous windows, Solskjaer brought them five players in because in his first chance of window, Solskjaer did not recommend anyone in. So there you go. So that's one improvement I've seen under Solskjaer. I think, you know, there's a lot of players that have improved as well under Solskjaer. You know, the likes of, you know, we've seen the best of the likes of Martial. Luke Shaw has done very, very well. Um, we've 
I think, you know, Fred's done very, very well because he's been given his opportunities this season and that. Rashford, you know, did well before he sustained that back injury. But overall, anyway, Marcus Rashford is one of our best players. But analysing it under the Jose Mourinho era, them players I've just mentioned to you all endured very, very difficult times because Jose Mourinho's got a bad reputation with top players and that. So there you go. Like I said, uh, we've we've improved against the big six sides this season, you know, because our record against the big six sides has been tremendous. I think, you know, we've registered like 17 points against the big six sides this season. You know, Solskjaer, don't forget, has beaten Pep Guardiola three times in one season. He's become He became the first manager in history to do that. Also, too, uh, he's beaten Chelsea four times as a manager since he came in and he's overcome Frank Lampard three times. Drew with Liverpool early on in the season. Uh, he's beaten Tottenham twice, like I mentioned. So we've done very, very well against the big six sides and that. So they're the improvements I have seen under Solskjaer. And he's changed quite a few stuff as well. If you've noticed, you can, you can say he's changed of personnel and he's also changed the tactics and stuff like that. But yeah, Solskjaer, I know, will be under pressure to keep this good run of form up when the football season resumes because... Don't forget, before the football season got suspended, you know, we was in a good vein of form, you know, because we are unbeaten in our last 11 games in all competitions, and that's our best vein of form since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager and that. Like I said, you know, the sign of Bruno Fernandes, he has definitely made the difference. But there's going to be a lot of uncertainty in the summer transfer window. There's going to be a hell of a lot of uncertainty. There's going to be a lot of uncertainty in the um, summer transfer window. So we don't know. I don't really know who we're going to sign in the summer transfer window. But obviously, you know, a lot of clubs um, are going to face an unprecedented summer transfer window. But I think, you know, we can be competitive in the summer transfer window. I really, really do. Now, obviously, you know, we are in debt. Our net debt's increased by around £130 million almost. Our net debt now is around four hundred and twenty nine million, with the club no longer predicting revenues of up to five hundred and eighty eight five hundred and eighty million, sorry. The latest fa the financial figures got revealed on Thursday when Ed Woodward has spoke to investors on a conference call and that. Uh, but obviously you know you had Ed Woodward coming out last month, you know, saying that we won't do business as usual in the summer transfer market. And he basically ruled out big transfers to Manchester United. And he did say, you know, we won't spend hundreds of millions of pounds. But he also said just after that, that, you know, we will remain highly competitive in the summer transfer market. So Ed Woodward's obviously, you know, said that he's willing to back Solskjaer. And he's said this quite a few times. And he's also assured that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job is safe at the football club. Even though we have enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. So um, there you go in that. Don't forget, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had recently <coughs> been given words in private, you know, regarding our transfers and that. And Solskjaer has been told that, you know, we may find it difficult to give him an official transfer budget, you know, due to the financial issues. I think, you know, Solskjaer's transfer limit has been set like he updated you the other day. Reportedly, you know, we're not willing to spend any more than sixty or seventy million pounds on any player, and Ed Woodward has confirmed this and that. So there you go. So who are Manchester United going to sign in the summer transfer window? You know, it will be interesting to see, and that. But yeah, we need around three or four signings in the summer transfer window to become title contenders next season. That you know, that's what you know Manchester United do need to do. And, um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. And I think, you know, Solskjaer still wants to continue the policy of recruiting young British talents to Manchester United like he did do last summer. And um, don't forget, uh, recently, I give you the news on Sal and the Gears from Atletico Madrid because, you know, reports have been coming out from Spain saying that we've allegedly... Uh, he's allegedly, sorry... It allegedly, so allegedly, he's moved to Manchester United. He's practically done, and confirmation is expected at the end of the campaign. Reportedly, we set to we set to get Saul the gears for around seventy million. 
His actual release clause is around 131 million in his athletic home with contracts and that, but I don't think a lot of Manchester United fans, you know, believe in this. So um, there you go and that. But like I said to you, Solskjaer does deserve at least another season at the club and he does deserve at least a couple of more transfer windows. I'm not sure if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the foreseeable future for Man United and I'm not sure if we can get our 21st title under him, but we need to stick with him for now. Now, obviously, you know, when the season resumes and if everything was to go wrong and was to go in a bad vein of form and was to fail to qualify for the Champions League, then, you know, the pressure will be then on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. It really, really will and that. Like I said, you know, we haven't got the structure to keep sacking, man sacking managers anywhere. Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Alex Ferguson era. We have sacked three managers since the Ferguson era and that was David Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho on that. You know. And like I said, in the last six or seven years, we've been playing capture. We've had different managers with different philosophies. We've spent close to the billion pound range on players and we've recruited over 30 odd players in since the Alex Ferguson era. Well, yes, we haven't that. But, you know, we haven't dominated English football since we had Alex Ferguson, you know, because the vast majority of our success came under Ferguson. Ferguson endured 26 years at Manchester United. Obviously, you know, I think won a total of 38 major honours, including like 13 Premier Leagues and that. But there again, you know, Ferguson didn't win out in his first four years at Manchester United and he was very, very close to getting sacked. But one thing I can assure, no one will replicate Ferguson's legacy at the club. No one will last as long as Alex Ferguson did. So let's just put that into the equation and that. So there you go. Obviously, you know, before Ferguson, you know, we had the likes of Ron Atkinson, you know, we had Wolf McGuinness. He only enjoyed 18 months at the club, did Wolf McGuinness, and he only recruited one player in. We had Franco Farrell, don't forget. Um, it was actually, no, we actually got relegated under Franco Farrell, and that was back in 1974 and that. So last time we was relegated was like 40 odd years ago, and now is it or something like that? But there you go. But I hope things do work out under Solskjaer because I like Solskjaer a lot. He's a, club, he's a club legend. He was a great player for the football club for 11 years. He flourished under Alex Ferguson's guidance and that. Um, like I said, my reservations about Solskjaer is, is that he's inexperienced as a manager. But the longer Solskjaer remains in the Manchester United job, he's going to be gaining more managerial experience. Because before Solskjaer was at Man United, of course, he was at Mould. Won a couple of Norwegian titles at Mould. And before he was at Mould, he was at Cardiff. Enjoyed a very, very short tenure with Cardiff. I think he only managed around 29 games for Cardiff. But the main explanation why he got sacked from Cardiff is because, you know, he did end up getting Cardiff relegated. And let's put into the equation, we we was facing a relegation battle earlier on in the season. And, that. and I think Solskjaer's got around, is it two years left on his Manchester United con contract? on his Manchester United contract and that. But like I said, you know, Solskjaer was very, very close to getting the sack earlier on in the season. You know, at that point, there was talks of Mauricio Pochettino coming in. Uh, don't forget, Pochettino was linked with a managerial role at Man United before Solskjaer got the job permanently. Uh, don't forget, you know, there was talks of Masmiliano Allegri in that coming in. I think Masmiliano Allegri is still linked with a managerial role at Man United because, like he updated you on my previous video... Gazzetta della Sport have said that Masmiliano Allegri is ready for his next managerial role. Masmiliano Allegri has been managerless for a year now because he resigned as Juventus manager last summer. So um, there you go and that. There, there you go. But I do expect us to enjoy a better season next season than what we have enjoyed this season, especially if we do get the right players in to the football club and that. At the moment, City has strides ahead of us and Liverpool has strides ahead of us, so it's very, very imperative, you know, that we do catch up with them. Don't forget, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did say in an, in an interview last week with the United We Stand fanzine, I'll give you an update on this, and, you know, Solskjaer was talking about the problems that we had in the squad last season. This is what Solskjaer was talking about. You know, the problems we had in the squad last season, you know, he said, you know, players were physically tired and mentally tired and we had injuries and stuff like that and this is one of the main explanations why Solskjaer has been making a lot of rotation in the squad 
is reflect on the injuries that we've had this season and the injuries that we've had, you know, since he came in and that. He also, you know, did make an admission saying that, you know, that he has been players at the football club with personal agendas. Um, and he did say, you know, last week, you know, he will not tolerate any personal agendas at Manchester United and that. Solskjaer's obviously, you know, very big on his personality and players fitting the dynamic of the squad. And obviously, one of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's biggest tasks since he became Man United manager was getting rid of the bad attitudes. And that led to Sanchez leaving and Lukaku leaving last summer. And they both went to Inter Milan and that. Uh, you know the news on Pogba as well. I give you the news on Paul Pogba yesterday. Reportedly, we'd submitted a bid to Inter Milan. Uh, we'd reportedly offered Paul Pogba to Inter Milan as part of a swap deal of us getting Milan Skriniar. But Inter Milan had turned this down. It's also confirmed today that uh, Milan Panjanic and Paul Dybala do not want to join Man United in a swap deal of Paul probably going back to Juventus. So that's also being confirmed as well. But my own perception on Paul Pogba is I think he's staying at Manchester United. I really, really do think he's staying at the club. Mate, I don't know about the foreseeable future, but I think he will be here next season. You know, will Paul Pogba I really, really do and not. So there you go. Uh, you know the news on Werner. Give you the news on Werner earlier on and yesterday. I think Werner would be the perfect signing for Man United. I give you the news on Kai Havertz as well yesterday. Don't forget. So um, there you go. So anyway guys. Drop me comments, likes below on the channel. If you do consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. And I'll see you all again very soon.